now half an hour for a cuddly owl to ruffle his feathers. It's the Mike Harding Show. <laughs> After we finished here tonight in this Mongolian Christmas cake, <laughs> when we finished here tonight, the lighting techs and everything, and the, the roadies, my roadie Dave and Steve, uh, we, we're going to a party afterwards after the show, because uh, we get invited to loads of parties, like when we're touring around the country, and we, we we're very careful what ones we go to now, because we used to go years ago. We used to go to a lot of posh parties, you know. Because you used to get people coming up to you and they'd say things like, um, at the end of the show, you'd be just going home, right, and somebody come, big tall bloke, like the roly poly outside, would come up and say, uh, rather enjoy the show this evening, rather enjoy the show. Super, super show, super show. Tell me, um, you know, tell me. Uh, I, I suppose you do this full time, do you? Do this full time? <laughs> you know? Or do you, do, you, do you do this? Is this a proper job? You know, is this a proper job? Or do you have another real job? You have a real job. I said, well, I've got, I've got a real job. Yes, I've got a real job. I'm a test pilot for Draft Guinness. <laughs> yeah, oh, super, good, yes. Oh, uh, trivet, 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 trivet. Hmm, oh, well, trivet, trivet. Hmm, anyway, well, what it is, old chap, what it is, really. Um, we're having a bit of a, bit of a knees up. What? Hmm, hmm, huh? <laughs> bit, of a, bit of a knees up, bit of a, bit of an old, you know, shind it, shind it, hmm. I'm uh, back at the old, you know, the old place, right? So if you could have uh, a funny way to bring in, you know, coming along. And uh, we'd love to have you there, and some people, you know, have a bit of a, you know, sort of drinky poos, and, um, you know, a bit of a wad, and a uh, cup of rosy lee, and whatever else you like, you know, and sort of, you know, just chat and meet people generally, relax, you know, have a good time. I said, well, thank you very much, and uh, you said you could even bring the rough chaps, you know, them scruffy lads who come round with you. <laughs> so I said, well, well, thank you very much, like, so we go. I mean, we used to go, we don't go anymore. But what a mistake. I mean, what a mistake. So you go to places, really posh places, I'm talking about, like Glossop, you know, posh places like that. <laughs> there it is, Glossop, no. No. Glossop's posh, is it? Yeah, it's it. So we, we go off to places like Glossop or Bramall, you know, and we go along. <laughs> Bramall's posh. Of course it's posh. They get out of the bathroom and pee in Bramall, they must be posh. <laughs> They do, they don't stand up and aim it, they get out, don't they get out? <laughs> so we'd get invited and we'd go, and you knew, it, you knew it was a mistake, let me explain. You'd know it was a mistake right away, because you'd get to this area that the address was on, you know, and they sort of drew a bit of a map, and you knew it was wrong because there were more trees than people. <laughs> you never seen houses like it, like, you know, they, they, they used to look like institutes or homes. I couldn't believe that people lived in them. All them bedrooms, what do they do? They must sleep in a different one every day of the year. <laughs> Huge, I thought they were orphanages. You know, you can't imagine houses this size. And you go up this long path, like, and get to the door, and you'd press the bell, and from miles away inside the house, this thing would go, ding, dong. And then there'd be a bit of shuffling, and chains would go, and the door would open, and the hostess, who you'd not met yet, would be there. Stood there, and she's got the evening gown on, Cut down to here, the bingo dress, eyes down, look in, you know, and you're there. <laughs> and she's run the last hundred yards to the door, so it's poking out a bit, and you stood there saying, uh, if you're selling them pups, I'll have the one with the pink nose. <laughs> you know, no. And all they... All they used to do, they used to just say, oh, <laughs> how quaint. You can't upset them, you can't upset these upper crust. Oh, do you try it? No, they just say, oh, how quaint. Do come in. Are you, are you, you're Michael, are you? You're Michael. Very pleased to meet you, Michael. Do come in. Do come in. And you go in and sink into the carpet. You're struggling like this, like... You know? and, and the roadies are not used to it. They're trying to steal bits and take it home. <laughs> you shake hands and she said, do come in. Meet lots and lots of interesting people. Lots and lots. You're going to have a really super time. Leave your coats there, you know, and you hang your coats up. And like, we've got like really rough jackets and, like, and, the, and the sort of... The jackets themselves are pinching things out of other people's pockets. They're just... 
And they open this double door, and inside this room, there's 200 people. And all I can describe them is, drink, let me put my guitar up, drinking ducks. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Have you seen these things you can buy from joke shops? <laughs> the bird that dips in the cup of water and then goes out again like that, right? Because they've people, they've got a paper plate in one hand with food all over it and a glass in the other. So they can't shake hands or wave at anybody. They're all going, hello, Jeremy. How are you? Yes. How are you? Wonderful to see you. The whole room. Hello. Hello, how are you? Yeah. They're all giving it that. And you walk in, right? And you think, oh, no. <laughs> and you walk straight. She said, do come and meet, the, you, you meet the nice people here. Do come in, Michael. The rough boys, you look after yourselves. And she drags me over, like, towards a drink. And I used to drink a lot, like, you know. Just to forget. Occasionally, I couldn't remember what I was trying to forget, you know. But <laughs> so we go over there. She say, um, would you like a drink? Yeah, I'll have a bottle of brandy, please. <laughs> oh, how quaint. Um, <laughs> anything in it? Yeah, I'll have another bottle of brandy. I'll... <laughs> So she goes in, two bottles of brandy, and there's no glass big enough, so you get the goldfish bowl, tip the goldfish in the trifle, all the brandy in it, and stood there, ready for anything. Right, this is it. Right, drinking away, and up comes King and Queen Nightmare. <laughs> Roggers and Juju. The hostess oh. comes along and says, Roggers, Juju, do come on, and Mick, Mick, this is Mick Mick. Where did he get these names from, Roggers, Juju? Mick Mick. I said, hello, pleased to meet you. How are you? All right? Yes, all right, right. Jobs are good. Hey, plenty of scran, you know what I mean? Plenty of grub. Eh? Plenty of booze. Be all right here, kid, won't we, eh? Yes, rather. Super, yes. I'm drinking with this fellow. I've never seen anything like him. All he can talk about is cars. He's talking about his car. There's only two things I know about cars. Nothing and bugger all. <laughs> and I'm drinking. I'm saying, goodbye, brain cells. I must leave you. <laughs> He's saying, uh, I've got 1948 twin-eyed, frog-eyed, sprite, twin overhead cams and 45 PQ1 aerial sift, and they've got uh, twin overhead sumps and camshaft deliberators, and, and I can't understand a word he's saying. He's saying chain drive, intermission, fault scanning, and, uh, you know, he's going on and on. He said, but trouble is, took Juju out for a ride the other morning, you know, took Juju out, and then he starts talking about the car, and I don't know whether he's talking about the car or his missus. I'm lost. Because I've had a bit of this, haven't I, you know. And he said, took, took her out for a ride, the old man. He took the old dear out. He said, and I've had a lot of trouble getting her started, you know, on these cold mornings. He said, I've tried everything, you know, tickling up the points. He said, <laughs> anyway, a friend of mine told me, he said, the points may be a bit rusty. So I got some surgical spirits, a couple of cotton buds, gave it that. He said, slip one in the box, and away we went. <laughs> I mean, dude, night press. I'm really walloping it down then. And I thought, I don't want to get too drunk too quick, like, you see. So I thought the best thing to do is eat. Now, the one thing you must... Have you ever get invited to these posh parties? Have you ever... Don't eat. The one thing you must... Don't eat. They're used to it. They're used to it. All these people have got a Claridge's and Arrowhead's. They're used to all that and Sainsbury's. I'm not used to all this rich stuff. <laughs> They've moved in up here, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. We're going to send the UCP down there. Don't worry. <laughs> Wait till they get some of that tripe, eh? Dressed down there. They wonder what's it. And they'll be wearing it on the feet. They wonder what it's for. <laughs> but we're there on this posh party and the food. The table's groaning with it. They've got everything there. You can't eat the food that they've got there, though. It's not for us. They've got ball bearings on toast. <laughs> Hundreds of tiny little black ball bearings on toast. There's some kid on roller skates going... Mm, mm. I'm not eating them. They're my own teeth, these. I don't want to ruin them. And they've got these things, what, the anchovies, and, and, the looks, neck end of sardine. <laughs> Somebody's got a kipper, a kipper, and a pencil sharpener, and giving it that. <laughs> you've, you've not got a good mouthful in them, you've got to get a big bag of them, and that's it. <laughs> and they've got these things, volivants, you can't eat, they look like you've just eaten them, you can't eat them. <laughs> no thanks, I'm all right, I'll leave them out. And cheese, they've got cheese there. You can't eat that stuff, it's like people's feet. <laughs> and it's growling on the table, it's lurking there going... <laughs> Somebody cuts it open, six people go... <laughs> I'm stood next to this woman, somebody cut her cheese open, I didn't know what it was, I'm going... She's very posh, black, and the pearls and every bombazine and all the bit, and the big up bouffant hair, I'm stood there, eating a sarnie like, you know, lettuce and celery, and I'm just eating it, and... Looked at her, and... <laughs> 
I said, have you just dropped one or what? <laughs> she, she said, no, I said, well, it's not me, it's somebody around here. <laughs> you can't eat stuff like that. So I'm eating a bit and drinking a bit, and then I, I, I think I must have had a bit too much, because you know you get that feeling when you stood there, and all of a sudden the room starts moving on its own. <laughs> it's going up and down, you know, and, and the, you, know the, you know the green Korean lady over the mantelpiece? She's winking at you, you know, and... <laughs> Jig Jigger Johnny, hey? <laughs> and the three plaster ducks on the wall have all flown up each other's jacks. <laughs> And you stood there thinking, I'll be all right, I'll be all right, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. No, it's just hiccups, it's just hiccups. I'm going to be okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Please God, I'm all right, I'm all right. No, I'm not going to be sick, I'm all right. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes, all right, yes, I'm not, I'm not all right, I'm going to be sick. I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not, what, 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 excuse me. And this big head comes out of the sky, big head comes out of this cloud and goes, are you all right? <laughs> and you look at me, you Yes. Yeah. Could you tell me where the little boy's room is, please? I beg your pardon. The little boy's room. Are you queer or something? What's the matter with you? <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, I, I want. She was like, I just want. Can I have a bath, please? Where the bathroom? Is? I'd like a bath. Tell me where the bathroom is. Up the stairs, you cuckoo. So you run straight. Boom. Hit the bottom stair. As soon as you hit the bottom stair, all the stair rods fly up in the air. Wham! You've got to crash the run to go up, all in carpet like that. And you're trying to climb up this. You, you get up three, roll back again, up three, roll back in. You finally make the landing, collapse, balump, on the deck, lying there with your nose an eighth of an inch from the carpet. And you're staring at this pile, you're going, Hello, oh, carpet. <laughs> oh, what a lovely carpet. You are, carpet. You're nice and friendly. It's warm here, carpet. I'm going to. I'm going to stay here forever and ever, Carpet. I love you, because you're not like them stupid people on stairs. You're lovely. I love you, Carpet. I can never love you. I'm going to stay here forever. And ever and ever. And... No, I'm not. Excuse me, Carpet. <laughs> and you kick open the bathroom door, and there's an old lady sat there with the trolleys around her ankles going, Ah! <laughs> and she says, Excuse me. I'm sorry. The house is on fire. Quick out. She runs downstairs with the knickers around her ankles. People <laughs> drinkle. I say, is that your mother? One. <laughs> And you run in, lock the door, and it all goes off. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Every village in Wales. Clangeri, go, 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 go! Hammer is with Clangeri, go, 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 go! Oh, oh, and then you start yodeling. Yodel, 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 yodel! <laughs> oh, please, God, don't make me yodel anymore. Yodel, yodel, yodel! Oh, God, don't yodel, 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 yodel! Oh, God, I'll go to church every Sunday. Yodel, yodel, yodel! <laughs> oh, that was fun the first time. Don't make yodel, yodel, yodel! <laughs> oh. Oh, and you look down, and there's always carrots. <laughs> always. always. I was the first to point this out eight years ago. Always. You may never have eaten carrots in your life, but there they are. <laughs> you may have lived in an island devoid of carrots. Where did they come from? I think they live down the plug hole. <laughs> And you stagger downstairs to the party, and it's like they're all they're still there. Hello, Jeremy. How are you? How are you? <laughs> and you walk, you're a foot off the ground. You're walking, floating. There's people saying, "Who's that grey-looking chap with hot and cold tattooed on his forehead over there?" <laughs> and you float through, out into the garden. And you think, "I've oh, a bit of fresh air. I'll be all right. A bit of fresh air." And you're out in the fresh air. You go. <gasps> 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 The fellow comes out, he says, I see the daffodils are coming up, not them as well, I've just done <laughs> carrots, I've not daffodils. I've had carrots, but no daffodils. And he leans over, and it's the original one, they're touching the points up, Johnny, isn't it? And he leans down, he says, uh, I, I, I met you before inside, didn't I? I smuggled over, yes. Tell me, what was your name? I didn't catch it. Smagadim. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Smagadim. <laughs> Smagadim? <laughs> is, this a, is it Urdu or something? Is it Smagaladin? I've never heard a name like this. Smagaladin? No! Smaggle! Adam! <laughs> Smaggle! Oh, well, hello, Smaggle! <laughs> What's your second name? Harding! Harding! Oh, I knew some Hardings once. I knew some Hardings down in Kent. Uh, you're not one of the Sidcup Hardings, are you? No, I'm one of the Pistol Hardings, me. <laughs> <laughs> there was 
one sort of area we used to go when I was a kid, and it was a sort of meeting place for everybody, and there was an old gas lamp just about four doors down from me, and I wrote a song about it. It sounds a strange thing to do, write a song about a gas lamp, but honestly, we always used to meet there because there was like, there's two in the street, one right down the bottom and one at our top end. We lived next door to the corner shop. Big gas lamp, and all the kids used to meet there, and we used to play games, rally vol, kick can, black and white rabbit, tiggy off the ground, all the bits, you know, and we used to get... Uh, it had the, one, the old one with the arms out, you know, and you could climb up on it and light your fags off the mantle and things, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then we used to tie swings on it and a rope and run round it and then kick your legs out and sort of go round and round until the string wound itself round the lamppost and you ended up with your head smashed in. <laughs> Good old games, you know. And uh, then they replaced it by one of these big concrete ones, you know. Now the thing is, they put this 48 foot concrete lamp post in our street, the sort you see on motorways, you know. Now the trouble is, our houses are only 18 foot high. <laughs> the street was pitch black, but we've got the best lit roofs you've ever seen in Manchester, you know. The sparrows walking home with dark glasses on seem too much, man. <laughs> so the whole thing went, and I suppose really in a way this is... Any intellectuals who happen to be watching tonight will recognise that this is what you would call a sentimental song. And well, I don't think there's anything wrong with sentiment in the right place. And um, it's a sentimental song in a way about the old kids and the gang and, and all the lot of us who used to meet. Down round this old gas lamp. And uh, if you're looking for any deep meaning in it, there isn't one. It's called The Old Green Iron Lamp. corner of a street there was an old gas lamp those kids used to meet there every night we'd swing from its old bars and we'd play hide and seek in the shadows just beyond its yellow light and it must have seen some meetings and some changes through the years. I know it's seen some laughter, and I know it's seen some tears. But time travels on, and our old gang is gone. It met beneath that old green iron lamp. All the kids from our street gang, we meet each night. Swap comics, tell a tale, or fool around. We talk about the things that we would be when we grew up. The lights from that old lamp spilled on the ground. And it must have seen some meetings and some changes through the years. I know it's seen some laughter, and I know it's seen some tears. But time travels on, and our old gang is gone. It met beneath that old green iron lamp. Wonder where they are, the kids in our old gang. Now that all the years have come between, we've changed and we've all travelled now, and that old green lamp is gone. Nothing's gonna be the same again. And it must have seen some meetings and some changes through the years. I know it's seen some laughter and I know it's seen some tears. But time travels on and our old gang is gone. But met beneath that old green iron lamp. I could bring those old days back 
I wouldn't even try There were days when we knew sadness and new pain But I know I'd give a lot if I could bring back that old gang Meet them underneath that lamp again And it must have seen some meetings and some changes through the years I know it's seen some laughter And I know it's seen some tears But time travels on And our old gang is gone That met beneath that old green iron land That met beneath that old green iron land A lot of people think um, the song's about the aristocracy. A lot of people think I don't like the aristocracy in this country. This isn't true. I think they do a great job looking after this country for us and looking after all the land, minding it for us, you know. Because I'm, I'm sure we'd lose it if we had it. We wouldn't, know, we, we wouldn't know what to do with all that land, would we, you know? I mean, Willie Whitelaw, you know, most of Cumberland, good lad. Alec Douglas Hume, most of Scotland, you know. Fair play to them, you know. I mean, they'd look after it for us all, because it's... I'd be worried. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night, you know. You know, I mean, you might be wondering, a cow might walk on a field or something, you know. <laughs> It'd be a terrible worry to have. And, I mean, I've got nothing against aristocrats. A lot of people think I have, you know. I've got nothing against them. Because, I mean, how can I? Because, truth to tell, I don't really know any, you know. I mean, there weren't many in Crumsall when I was a kid, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, in our street particularly, doing the biscuit works, there weren't a lot of aristocrats, as it happens, you know. There was a bloke called King, but I don't think he was, you know. <laughs> Mind you, he did have a dog called Prince. <laughs> and this bloke used to spit in the gutter whenever he wanted, you know, so he might have been king. Because if you can king, you can spit anyway, it doesn't matter. You know. But I don't think he was, you know, so I've got nothing against the aristocracy. And, um, my granddad loved him. My granddad loved him. He used to come out here in, in uh, the 30s, you know, when the mass trespass was on Kinder Scout, you know. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot of places you still can't walk round on these hills, you know, because they're owned. I mean, Grandad used to come over here before the mass trespass, and he was walking over the hills round, you know, Derbyshire, and he got on the tops there, and he didn't know it, but the Duke of Devonshire was up there, and he had his guns in his man, and he was shooting uh, peasants, you know, just shooting. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's a rich man's sport, we can't afford it, you know, and he's there. And he's got his double barrel gun and he's going bang, bang, you know, and he's got this man with him who keeps loading his gun for him and carrying the dead bits and he keeps saying, Go on, chop my lord, chop my lord. He goes, bum, 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 bum. Anything that moves, balloon, balloon, bum, bum. Chop my lord. Hey, a good shot, my lord. Are you, I think you've just bagged a brace of hikers. <laughs> the Lord Devon just says, Oh, super, super. Have them sent down to the club. And make sure they're well hung. They are, my lord. I had a look. Yeah. <laughs> if they don't get it, don't tell them. Don't tell them. <laughs> and there's my granddad comes over the hill like with his little old Axe Army rucksack on his back, you know, and his, his big KDs sticking out here, you know. KD shorts like Dad's Army, you know, coming over. <laughs> Lord Devonshire said, I say you, you. Working class type chappy, come over here. <laughs> so my granddad, he never liked that finger bit, never liked it. He said, you come over here. <laughs> so Lord Devonshire went over, you see. And he said, what the bloody hell do you think you're doing here? My granddad said, uh, I'm walking. <laughs> he said, you know, you put one leg in front of the other, they call it walking, you know what I mean? You keep going, like if you stop, you stop, you know. He said, clever dick, he said, clever dick, he said, uh, but don't you realise, he said, did you realise that this is private land, you cannot walk here? 
So my granddad gave it a bit of a scan, didn't he? Give he said, what do you mean, like, you can't walk here? He said, I told you, it's private land. He said, well, whose is it? He said, it's mine. He said, come on, pal. He says, well, don't be stupid. He said, where'd you get it from? <laughs> he says, you can't go into a mountain shop and say, three mountains and a river, please. <laughs> don't wrap them, I'll take them as they are. He said, where'd you get them from? You can't own mountains and hills. He said, of course I bloody well own it. He said, well, come on, then where did you get it from? He said, I got it from my father. He said, well, where did he get it from? He said, well, he got it from his father. He said, where did he get it from? He said, he got it from his father, and he goes right back to the very first Duke of Devonshire. He said, well, where did he get it from, the first one? He said, he fought for it. He said, right, get your coat off, I'll fight you for it. Come on, then. <laughs> He wouldn't do it. So this song's for my granddad, who was a bit of a lad in his day. It's called the, uh, it's called the upper echelon. It's got a bit of a chorus, but you've been <laughs> minus seven so far. Eighteen for effort, minus seven for product. And um, if you feel like joining in the chorus, then uh, oh god. <laughs> Rodney's going out with Daphne, who was once engaged to Ted, so she found him lying naked in her mummy's double bed. She wouldn't have minded him having mummy, but he was giving daddy one instead. God, it's <laughs> brutal in the upper echelon. And you remember that frightfully arty girl called Anne, but she called herself Olivia. She married a retired guards major went to run a gay bar in Bolivia. Well, she's got a divorce now in a flat in Chelsea in a shop selling 50s trivia. We survive in the upper echelon. And I sometimes wonder if the poor people do it like we do. Vodio, Vodio, do I sometimes feel it should be reserved for the likes of me and you and Lady Olga Maitland and the rest of us. Well, I had to shoot my favorite hunter at a meet at Chipping Beck. He tripped over to dashed anti blood sports chap and fell and broke his leg, but Rodney grabbed the bounder and kicked him and damn near broke the bastard's neck. We love our animals in the upper echelon. My brother's trying to go gay, but he doesn't like it much, so he's living with a lady bricky, who's more than a little bit butch, so we don't know who's doing what to whom, with what and for how much. God, it's confusing in the upper echelon. And I sometimes wonder if the poor people do it like we do. Oh dear, oh dear, do I sometimes feel it should be reserved for the likes of me and you. Don't you do? You know, I met a working-class novelist last month at the Blemsby Gores. He picked his nose and farted and belched and threw up on the parquet floor. And I thought he was spiffing and earthy when he called Mammy a capitalist whore. We support the arts in the upper echelon. Now, when Mummy goes to Bridge Club, the gardener comes round for tea. He's rather scruffy and smells of manure, but looks rather like Oliver Reed. <laughs> and he's built like an Arab donkey, and he goes like a sewing machine with no our onions in the upper echelon. <laughs> 